The advice and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Sorry, muted. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I am Shannon Penrod and I'm so thrilled to be here. We're coming to you live from my house and live from several other people's houses this morning. So, uh, but it's Thursday and we're all still here and that is a miraculous thing. I saw the most interesting thing posted the other day that said, you know, everybody needs to stop saying we're all in this together. Um, we're all in the same storm together, but we're not all in the same boat together. And they went on to talk about, you know, how circumstances can be vastly different for different people. And I thought, boy, I, I really think that that says it all. While we might be in it together, <clears throat> we are not all in the same boat. Some people have bigger challenges than others. And I know some of you have bigger challenges than others, but I'm thrilled and excited to be here with you. And my mission is to give you some information and inspiration today that hopefully will make your boat ride a little smoother or, or at least a little bit more powerful so that you remember why it is that you're in the boat that you're in and, and who you're in with it, right? Because we we're sending you big old hugs. You know, I always like to say here on the show, si se puede. And we hold virtual hands and we get through this together, right? Uh, thrilled that you guys are here. And by the way, when I say you guys, I hope that you guys know I'm speaking to the larger autism community. So that starts, first of all, with the core of individuals who are on the autism spectrum, right? Uh, we couldn't, couldn't be doing a show without inviting those folks to have a voice here. That would be crazy, right? Not what we would want to do here. But what we also do here is that we welcome everybody who loves those individuals, everybody who cares about them, everyone who's fighting for them to get the rights and the employment and the housing and the dignity that they so richly, richly deserve. So that's when I talk about the larger aut autism community. And I count myself as part of that because I am a mom of an individual who was diagnosed with autism when he was just two and a half. And so I want to create a world in which he has the voice that he should have. Um, and obviously the voice looks different on a whole bunch of different people, right? It isn't just vocal speech. We've learned that a long time ago, but everyone, everyone has a say. Everyone has a seat at the table, as my good friend Joanne Lara likes to say. Everybody gets a seat at the table. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. We want to remind you that we're live for this next hour and that you guys can be writing in and you already are in the myriads of different ways that we are available. We're live right now on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Periscope. We will then later on podcast this show to iTunes. It will be on iHeartRadio, it's on Deezer, and it's on Spotify. But we're always, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on autism-live.com. That's our homepage. There's a lot to do on that page, so we want you to check out whatever works for you. Everything is not going to be of interest to you on that page. Look, there's all the different ways that you can connect with us. Um, but for instance, at the top of the page, there's lots of different things that you can search. You can go through our n almost nine years of videos, um, a library of videos with experts and parents and individuals on the spectrum, self-advocates, that you can go through and perhaps find something even in the wee hours of the night when you're feeling like you're completely alone to be reminded you are not alone. There's a whole lot of people in the same storm with you, right? Different boats, same storm. Um, and they care about you. 
And that's the other thing that I think is really important to know. So, um, but also there is a chat at the bottom of our homepage, autism-live.com. It's free, it's anonymous. Uh, so, you know, you can write into us on Facebook Live, absolutely, and we will respond to you. But if you wanna be a little bit more anonymous, as we said yesterday, if you don't wanna be putting your business on the streets, uh, <laughs> Love, love that expression. Uh, you can write into us anonymously on the chat that is on autism-live.com. And we hope that you'll check out the myriads of different things that are available to you on that site. It's all free. It's very important that we, uh, our mission, as I said, is to give you information, inspiration, and to do it in formats that are free so that you can access it any time or day or night. If you've got the internet, then there's a way for you to connect with us and hopefully to get some of the answers to some of the questions or at least information that will lead you to the right question. Because sometimes the right question is what it's all about, right? I do like to start the show off by saying we have lots of experts that are here on the show with us and I love to give you that kind of information. Please don't confuse me with one of the experts. I've already told you I'm a proud parent. I'm a former teacher, uh, former everything, right? <laughs> stand-up comedian, you know, like all these weird things that I used to do. But now um, what I like to do is be here with you and to be there for my kiddo, who's now about to be 17 and applying to colleges. And, you know, it's a very weird time to be 17. But um, I'm so thrilled with the progress that he has gotten. And uh and how he is doing, I couldn't be more proud of him. But that doesn't make me an expert in the field of autism. I've been covering autism now from a journalistic standpoint for over 10 years. Um, so I like to say that I have an informed opinion. And, but I believe me, I, there's, what I don't know uh, could fill the world. So, uh, but you know, ask me and I do have an informed opinion. <laughs> and I'm happy to share it. Way too happy to share it, uh, but don't confuse me for an expert. That's what that's all about. Now, uh, we also like to start off the show every day with something we fondly refer to as the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey, nani nani, are those experts talking about? We give you the actual def definition first. Then we give you a working definition after we attempt to make fun of the actual definition, because really, honestly, what else can you do with it? Uh, but we like to give you a place where you can start to begin to understand what the term means in your life, in your life, because otherwise, what does it matter, right? Um, and, you know, my phrase is if I can save you five minutes and five dollars, woohoo, we've, we've done our work for the day, right? And sometimes the jargon can be so overwhelming when you're just, it's a barrage, right? It's just whapping you in the face. So we take it a little bit at a time, you know that expression, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Um, try to introduce these terms to you. And I see you guys use these terms now. Ooh, you're so good. Uh, but take a look. This is why it's so confusing sometimes because our jargon term of the day is fluency. And I'll bet you're thinking, you know, Shannon, I don't need you to explain this to me. I know what fluency is because we move in a, a cosmopolitan world, right? Where people speak languages and we talk about being fluent in languages, right? But what does fluency have to do with autism and with applied behavior analysis um, and a person on the spectrum gaining a new skill? It's a little bit different, although somewhat related. So let's take a look at what our actual definition for fluency is. Uh, fluency is exhibiting retention, endurance, stability, and adduction. Now this is where they begin to lose me because the only time I've ever heard of adduction is when you're doing a workout. Like I used to have an old share video from 1994. And, and there was this one exercise where you had to, you know, step onto the block and lift your leg and they would called it adduction. That's the only ever time I've ever heard adduction, right? Uh, and, and when it, you know, when you think about exhibiting retention, endurance, stability, and adduction, not really a hundred percent sure. Let's move on to our working definition. So we don't feel like we're doing push-ups because that's not what this is about. Uh, when we're talking about fluency with an individual who's on the autism spectrum, who's learning a new skill, we're talking about being able to respond with both speed and accuracy. So a lot of times on the show, we talk about teaching methods. And of course, I'm a huge fan of applied behavior analysis. It's what my son had. And he didn't just have ABA, he had 
great ABA. And there's a big difference between ABA and quality ABA, right? Um, and part of it is fluency. We were talking yesterday with a parent who was talking about getting her child to speak. And we were saying that, you know, some people, this is an example of the difference between regular ABA, you know, just run of the mill, hang a shingle out ABA and quality ABA that you'll see somebody um, in regular ABA, they can you know, teach an individual to recognize what something is and they hold up a flashcard and it shows a picture of a table and, and they're able to label it and say table. Well, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're, what you're wanting is for the person to be able to communicate and say, I need help or to say, um, I have a pain in my thigh or um, you know, stop, um, you're annoying me right? When, when we want those kinds of conversations or for, for them to be able to say, I feel sad, um, right? Those are the kinds of communication that we want to be able to have and that those individuals want to be able to have, whether it's spoken or a picture exchange or something that you're um, doing with an assistive device, right? We want to be able to communicate at that level, right? So just teaching somebody flashcards is like step one in a 32 step process where we get to conversation. And I'm making that up, it's not necessarily 32 steps and it's different for everybody, right? But fluency is the point at which you've learned something and you are able to utilize it and do it with the speed and accuracy so that it is yours. It is your skill, you have it now. Think about anything difficult that you've learned to do in your life. I remember when my mother taught me how to drive and it all felt so foreign, right? Back then we were to hold hands at 10 and two. I'm now told that is no longer the thing. I had to go to traffic school the other day and it is no longer the thing, 10 and two. In fact, they uh, recommend three and nine now. This is news to me, right? Uh, but I remember you know, sitting there at 10 and two and like, you know, you have to look and you have to do the blinker and it all just felt like too much. And it was very overwhelming to me as a 16 year old back in the day. Um, and of course I would see my mother drive and my mother, you know, back in the day, my mother would have a cigarette going and she would be driving and she would have the radio and she would be singing and doing whatever. Um, and she wasn't causing an accident, but she was doing 18 things at the same time. And she wasn't having to think it through because she had fluency with her driving skills. Sometimes I think she had way too many things going on, but she was a safe, safe driver. Um, so when we, for instance, teach someone how to brush their teeth, we might break it down into these really small increments that look ridiculous and you think, how is that ever gonna work out, right? But we're teaching this part of the skill and we're teaching this part of the skill and this part of the skill, knowing that if we've got somebody who really knows what they're doing, they're gonna link all of these things in the chain and they literally call it chaining together, right? So that they will be semi-proficient at this. They will be able to do the toothbrush and do the whole stream together but that's not still quite fluent, is it? So fluency is the point at which somebody really possesses the skills and they're not having to think through every step of it, but they're able to do it with precision and accuracy in the speed at which the, the, the skill is completely theirs. Now that speed might be a little bit slower than you, or it may be faster than you, but it's a speed at which the, it's really theirs. And you guys know when you get something, when you have something and you're able to do it and not having to think through each step along the way, um, what that feels like. It feels different, doesn't it? And that is what we wanna give everyone when they're learning a skill. If you're a teacher, this is what you wanna do. So of course we wanna give that to individuals who are on the autism spectrum, right? So fluency, uh, we've talked before about mastery. Mastery is when you got it enough that you can do it in different circumstances, right? But fluency is yet another thing. Um, and sometimes we get patient as teachers and as parents that we want the fluency, so we poo-poo every step that's along the way. But I just want you to think for yourself, you know, tr try a new skill this week. What the heck, right? You know, we're, we're stuck in our houses, try a new skill. And you're going to have to learn it in, in these little increments, right? And it's not gonna feel like it's really yours yet. But that's not a reason to give up, is it? Fluency comes with time. 
fluency comes with being able to practice something again and again and again, and in different ways. And we can get to fluency on the skills that we teach individuals, but it does require um, some time and some effort. And that's where good ABA, I believe, comes in very handy. So there's our jargon for the day. Fluency, it's the thing that we all want, all of us, right? Why would we deny that to individuals on the spectrum? Okay, moving on, we always have a question of the day, something that we ask you guys. And our question today is, what do you do? Uh, that's not what it says, but <laughs> just what do you do for self-care? What's your regimen for self-care? What, what's the thing that really feels like self-care for you? You know, um, and I'm, I'm just going to move right on to our topic for the week. Our topic this entire week is self-care and how we take care of ourselves. And for those of you who uh, may be caregivers that are out there, especially caregivers of young children on the spectrum, uh, you know, uh, been there and done that. And a lot of times we put ourselves last, right? But we talked yesterday about that we need to take care of ourselves because this is a marathon, not a sprint, and we want to be there. And I've seen all too many times um, parents who get sick, caregivers who get sick because they didn't take care of self. And if the thing that we want more than anything else is to help take care of our kiddos, if we get sick, wow, that's mission failure, right? So we've got to take care of ourselves for that. And I know that just doesn't get it done. We just don't like it doesn't compute for us, right? We go, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later, right? But the other thing where we cannot have mission failure is that we need to model the behavior that our kids, and please don't tell me, oh, but you know, my child has more challenges and doesn't notice. I, I have yet to meet the individual, no matter what their functionality level, that, that doesn't recognize things that other people do. On a, sometimes it's on a level that isn't a languageable level, but they still notice what other people do. So if you are taking care of yourself, you are modeling the behavior for them, which is the most important step in helping them to do that for themselves. So, you know, and many of you have written in and said, Shannon, but I just, I, I don't know how, I don't know how to do it anymore. And I for sure don't have the time. And I want to remind you that this is the thing, start doing it with your kiddos. Find the thing, and it might just mean getting out three pans, uh, like, you know, if you have pie pans or whatever, and saying, we're going to do a foot soak today. Maybe you all go sit on the edge of the tub and you stick your feet in the tub and we have a foot soak today. And, and while we're foot soaking, we can sing songs or talk or they can have anything but electronics in their hands, right? Squishies or whatever, um, but that we get the foot soak in. You'll get it, they'll get it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, everything else can wait. Do something of that nature. Find something that you can do We've talked before, uh, and it's Thursday, we usually do our mindfulness moment on Thursday, uh, but lay on the floor, put a pillow on everybody's stomach, at, or put one of their stuffed animals on their stomach, and we try to make the pillow go up and down, and then we play with it, make it go up slowly, make it go down slowly. It you, Rome wasn't built in a day. It may not go perfectly the first time, even if you only get three breaths. Three breaths is great. It's better than what we were doing before, but self-care has got to be on the agenda now more than ever, right? It's how we're gonna get through uh, this great isolation that we're in. Okay, we're gonna talk more about that later, but I've got a great guest for you guys today. I'm so excited. We've been talking about uh, having, and we don't, we're, we postponed to Tommy and I, I thought that I had told you that, um, Draven. So uh, <laughs> we're so much of what we're doing these days uh, is, is just crazy, crazy, crazy. But who we do have, because I wanted to make more time for her to be on the show, uh, we have Chelsea Darnell. And it's the first time that we've had her on the show, although we've talked about having her on the show many times before. And Chelsea is a remarkable advocate. She is so talented. I mean, the more I talk to her, the more I find out of the things that she can do that are just amazing. Like she's, everything that I've talked to her about, she's great at. Uh, but one of the things that she's doing right now is she's hosting a weekly movie chat. And we're going to talk with her about that. This is the poster for this week's movie chat. And I just, I'm, the parent trap. I mean, you know, stop me. I just, I can't, right? Love it so much. Uh, love both versions of it. So uh, we're going to talk with Chelsea about where she's doing this and how you can potentially join 
or have your teams join and why that would be super fabulous. So uh, can we welcome Chelsea to the show? Is she in our green room and can we bring her in? And while we're doing that, I'm saying hi to Amanda and Bonnie and Johanny and uh, Christina and Party Outlet. <laughs> so uh, love it. Uh, Chelsea, look, hi, it's Chelsea Darnell. I'm so excited to see you. Are you outside? I am outside. I think you are the first guest in, in this uh, format that has, has braved doing an interview outside. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Autism Live. Thank you so much, Shannon. I, I can't believe that we've waited this long to do this because I, I wanted to get dressed up today. I didn't, but I wanted to get dressed up um, because I, I, and I, I was like, what's going on? And I realized that most of the time when I see you, Chelsea, it's because you're on the red carpet oh. and you're all dressed up. So I have associated getting dressed up with you. What a wonderful thing to partner, right? Um, you feel like dress up to me. So uh, thrilled that you are here, Chelsea. And for people who don't know you, um, we're going to talk about a lot of different things with you, but I want to start with you have a, uh, we were just showing the movie chat poster. You have a new role at the Ed Asner Family Center. Tell us what your role there is. Um, sure. So in addition to being a social director for the Young Adult Social Club at the Ed Asner Family Center, I started a program, which I call movie chat. Basically what we do is we watch a movie before every meeting and then we all meet every Saturday at seven o'clock and we discuss it. I just love this. Can I tell you how much I love this? It's like book, book club, but with movies, it's, it's just fabulous. Thank you. Yes, that was exactly what I was going for, a movie variant of a book club. And if anyone is wants to join uh, we're actually watching two movies this week. We're watching um, both versions of The Parrot Trap, and we're going to compare the re the remake and the original. I just, and and so far, the, the movies that I have seen you do, this has made me so excited because I just think this is so smart. But also, people will sometimes say, I just don't know what movies to watch with my teen on the spectrum. And now I'm, for now on, I'm just going to say, go look up movie chat and see all the movies that Chelsea did because you've had really good taste in movies. So tell, tell them which movies you've done so far. So in the last few weeks, our very first movie was Groundhog Day. Um, <laughs> very apropos. Yeah, it was very, we, I chose that movie um, on purpose because it felt fitting with um, the current time period. Yes. Uh, and then we did, we've also done Ferris Bueller's Day Off, we've done Back to the Future, and we've done uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Great list. And now Parent Trap, um, which, you know, I, I, my sister and I, somebody gave us the book. It was a book for Parent Trap. And it had pictures from the original movie. But see, we didn't have Netflix when I was a kid. And we would look at the pictures and we would say, oh, someday we hope we'll get to see this movie. And I was probably an adult the first time I got to see the original because there was no place, once it came out, there was no streaming service to go watch it. So it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And then of course, when they did the remake, um, love it. I, I'm gonna ask you, do you have a favorite of the two? Uh, which is, or, or do you not wanna say before Saturday? Um, so I actually haven't determined that yet. I'm still in the process of watching both. Okay. All um, right. I'm getting definitely going to get that done before 7 p.m. on Saturday. So. Okay. And so for people who are watching this, um, you know, the Ed Asner Family Center is located in the suburbs of Los Angeles. And you're, as you said, you're the social director, which I want to know more about that. But um, in the past, when we've talked about things happening at the Ed Asner Center, um, people would be like, man, I wish I lived in LA. It's such a bummer that I don't live in LA, but now you guys have put so much stuff online. Is this movie chat something that who gets to come to this and how can people come to it? Let's say that. Um, well, so it's very, first of all, we welcome anybody from anywhere in the world. I mean, obviously we're all going to be on zoom. 
so it's a perfect format when when we start doing things in person to get like in person again I actually still want to do this on zoom because I think it's connecting people from like all over the country and if we're lucky um the world it's a neurodiverse uh format so um all abilities are welcome um usually there's stuff posted on my instagram or my facebook about um details for the event i'm not sure what the meeting id and password is for this week's event um usually um uh shelby uh landucci she'll post um she works at the, the center she'll post um stuff about the meeting id and the password okay. So if you want to attend this, it's 7 p.m. on Saturday, and it's every Saturday, but that's 7 p.m. Pacific time. So you have to do the math for whatever time zone you're in. Uh, kind of, you know, a little bit later for you, those, but it's Saturday night, right? Uh, for those of you on the East Coast, but uh, perfect, you know, timing every place else. And, and even, like I said, Saturday night, you know, it's, it's the night to stay up late. So um, you can go to the Ed Asner Family Center um, on their um, website. You can go to their Facebook. But Chelsea, what is your Instagram so people can connect with you there? I think it's Chelsea Darnell 22. That's my okay. username on Instagram. Okay. So uh, people check that out. So what does it mean to be the social director at the Ed Asner Center? Because that's, so that's a... Oh, no, no problem. So the Ed Asner Center, we have a young adult social club, and it's exactly as it sounds. We bring young, we bring neurodiverse young adults together um, just to hang out. Obviously, we haven't been able to do um, that lately because of the current circumstances. But in the past, I've helped plan um, some of the events for our young adult social club, and I plan on um, doing it more when everybody can congregate in person again. Um, I planned. Um, I helped. I helped plan a, uh, we had a, we had a line dancing, uh, young, uh, we had, we did line dancing. So country line dancing. That was one of the things I guess I, uh, helped plan. We've had a Valentine's dance. We've had a Which was the best thing ever. Can I just tell you, it was the best thing ever. My family got to go to that. It isn't always, a lot of times it's just, you know, for those individuals that are in that young adult group, but this was uh, the Valentine dance. Uh, families were invited. My family got to go. We are still talking about it um, as being one of the the best things. And and can I tell you, it it like it, it's the happy thing that we think of when we're feeling isolated because it was so awesome. And I danced until I I made myself a little sick because <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> In fact, uh, now Shelby has put in that if you want to RSVP for the movie chat, it's Shelby, S-H-E-L-B-Y at edasnerfamilycenter.org. But if you go there, you can RSVP and then she'll make sure that you get the information of how to log in so that you can participate. Now, is there a cost for participating in the movie chat? Do you know, Chelsea? So far, it's, uh, it's all free. <laughs> there no, we go. It's all free. Yeah, so for all of you who are sitting there and you're like, I don't know what to do with my teen. My young adult has no nothing to do on Saturday night. They do now. So write, uh, write to Shelby at edasnerfamilycenter.org and tell Shelby that you want to register RSVP for this weekend, Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, where you're going to talk about the, the two um, parent the two traps. Yes, I wanted to say family trap, but it isn't parent trap. Okay, so what is it that you, you're doing all these amazing events, Chelsea, what is it that you're hoping to accomplish with all of this? Um, that's a good question. So, um, so I've done a couple of like um, interviews on red carpets. Some of them haven't been posted yet. I did back in February, I did one interview at the Makeup and Hairstylist Guild and another at the Art Directors Guild. Those videos are still yet to be completed, um, just like the clips put together and stuff. When they are completed, though, you will likely find them on my Facebook or my Instagram. Okay, cool. And I have seen you do some red carpets. I've been, uh, you know, standing a little further down from you on the red carpet, and I've, I've been a little bit in awe of how you have handled it and, uh, 
you know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing those other interviews too, and looking forward to for us to be able to watch those. But I, so here's a terrible, terrible question, and you can say I don't want to answer it, but do you have a favorite someone that you've interviewed that was super exciting for you? Um, that's a really good question. But it's also one I have trouble answering because there's a lot of people, yeah. uh, a lot of interesting people I've interviewed. And most people are very pleasant. Like I haven't, like, I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Um, and so let's not say favorite because then it makes it feel like everybody else is less. But who are some interviews that you really enjoyed? Let's say that. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. So when I did, I did the red carpet for um, the Ed Asner Family Center's big gala. It was also celebrating Ed Asner's 90th birthday. Yeah. Um, uh, the MC that night was Tom Bergeron, you know, who hosts Dancing with the Stars. And I interviewed him and I interviewed him for a little bit. And he was one of the, he was really uh, fun to interview. He was really nice. I love that. I love that. He seems like, you know, like a really sweet guy. And we love to hear that pe when we see people on camera and then hear that they're nice in person, I think it makes us feel good. Absolutely. Uh, so love Very to hear that. Refreshing. And then anybody else that you want to shout out that was super fun to interview? Oh, you know, it was really fun to interview at that same gala. Um, so Brad Garrett um, was interesting. Well, because I had met him a couple of times he actually went to high school with both of my parents so we bonded <laughs> over the fact that like um he was like talking about different memories he had of like being going to high school with my mom and dad so that was really fun oh, yeah. how fun that's hilarious i always find brad garrett funny because when a lot of times when he's acting or when he you know when he's performing, he has a very deep voice, but when he just has his regular speaking voice, it feels like it's three octaves higher, which I, I always think is hilarious because <laughs> he's this big, huge, tall guy and he has this very deep voice. But then when he's talking, it's a little bit more, you know? Yeah, in fact, he's so tall that in high school, he they did this thing where he was a ventriloquist and my dad uh, was the dummy because if, if, if anybody oh. knows my dad, they know that he's about five foot five feet <laughs> <laughs> well that i is there hidden is there video somewhere that can be obtained of that because i'll bet that was hilarious um not that i know of i don't think <laughs> you, i wish there was that would be but even picturing it is super fun oh. what great fun to have like have high school memories of people like that that's wonderful so do you like being on the red carpet is it fun for you it's definitely really fun. And it's definitely especially fun when there's like um like a celebrity like I know that's gonna be there that I'm excited about and they're like right there in front of me. It's very refreshing. I you know who I got to meet at that event that I thought I was just gonna like like split into a million pieces was Cloris Leachman. Uh, oh my god, that was a trip. Right. Sure. I like only got a very short time with her and she just I didn't know what the heck is going to come out of her mouth. Yeah. She's a pip, that one. <laughs> she is a pip. But I, you know, it was just such an honor for me to get to meet her. I've been a fan of hers forever. So, okay, here's an equally horrible question. So everybody has a get list, who they would like to get an interview. So who would it be really exciting for you to interview? I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know, like, it depends on the event. And who, yeah. I don't know, like. There's nobody that you're a big fan girl of? Um, I mean, I, there's definitely, actually, I somewhat take, okay, there's definitely people I'm a huge fan girl of. Um, but one of the people I would really like to interview is Paul Rudd. Oh, that would be a good one, right? Yeah. Are, now, why, why Paul Rudd? Are you a big Ant-Man fan or is it other things? Because he's been in so many things. Well, Ant-Man was where I was like, this dude's cool. He's also very handsome and very funny. I don't know. He just seems super fun. Like, Yeah. And and I suspect, because Paul Rudd has been doing movies forever, and he still looks like he's 28. I don't know yeah, what that's about. I'm like, he, he, like, I don't know. I don't even think he might. Like, he doesn't age. Like Exactly. 
But another guy that I think is very sweet. So we're putting it out there. Paul Rudd, Chelsea would like to interview you. Uh, and hopefully Paul Rudd will see this and, and go, okay, let's make it happen. <laughs> that would be super fun. Okay, so I want, that's all super fun. And again, I want to tell people, write to Shelby at edasnerfamilycenter.org to find out how you can do movie chat with Chelsea and friends. It happens on Saturday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. It's free. It's all part of the Ed Asner Family Center because um, Chelsea is doing a wonderful job as the social director um, there. But I want to I want to switch a little bit because we've talked about the fact that you know some of the things that you were doing you just can't do right now because we're in this COVID emergency. I like that people are calling it the Great Isolation. And I got to ask because I'm asking all of our guests, how are you doing with all of that? You personally with with the whole staying at home thing. Uh, for me, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm very lucky. Uh, we live in a, a good neighborhood. Um, I'm with my parents. I have one friend over at a time in my backyard, six feet apart, it's a safe distance. Um, I've done a lot of exercising, a lot of yeah. baking and cooking. So that's been really fun. There's one of, offsets the other. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things about this time that I'm kind of going to miss. And I actually like I didn't really have like clear hobbies before. Now I've had time to develop some hobbies. So it's really, actually, this has been a really meaningful time in my life. I love hearing that. What, what's, what, tell me what you've been doing hobby wise. So I like, it was my mom's birthday last week and I actually, uh, not from scratch, but I baked her a cake. So that was really fun. Lovely. Happy birthday to your mom, belatedly. What kind of cake was it? It was a lemon I think it was from Duncan Hines. It was like a lemon cake. And then I put strawberry frosting on it. Ooh, and it was like a heart, And I put it in like a heart-shaped tray. So it comes out. So it came out as like a heart. I love it. I'll bet she loved it too. She did. She did. Uh, so baking is, is a new thing that you got going on. Any other hobbies that you've started? Um, I've done, I have this thing. It's called the recumbent bike. It's basically a tricycle, except it looks, like what in a like something an adult would ride you have like a thing you like move it and then another thing and i've been riding that around my neighborhood so that's been really fun oh that's super fun uh and any advice because we got a lot of people that are watching that are stressed or have young adults that are are feeling stressed is is it the hobby thing that's been helping with the stress or is there anything else that you do when you start to feel stressed sure um definitely um exercise is really good um, if you want to, um, learning how to do something is also is really good. So whether that's baking or I don't know, knitting or like solving a jigsaw puzzle, like, like, um, using like a new, finding a new skill is definitely really good. It's also, you could also like, um, FaceTiming people is really good. Um, playing. Huh? You should be a social director because you know all the things. This is this is wonderful. We have not, uh, you know, I have a question here for you, but I feel like you sort of have answered a little bit. But I'm asking everybody, tell us one good thing that has come out of this period of isolation for you. What, what do you, uh, you know, you've already said that hobbies, but is there anything else you want to say? Um, definitely a lot more uh, quality time with my family. That's been really nice. What a wonderful thing, I, you know, and, and it is interesting. We were all going at breakneck speed and then we all had to come to a complete and total halt. And I, and I love looking at it and seeing that there are some good things like that because we'll never get this time again. And I'm sure your parents are just over the moon at getting to spend this time with you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because uh, I know I feel that way about spending time with my kiddo. Uh, okay, we haven't talked about, I, I told everybody, you are so hard to classify because you have so many talents in so many different areas. You're a wonderful host and you're a social director, but we haven't talked about the fact that you sing also, that you are an amazing singer, um, that that's uh, how I, that's the first time that I saw you. I was at the Ed Asner Center and they were doing karaoke night and different people were getting up. And, you know, and we like a bunch of us were making fools of ourselves, but I got to say, you got up and you opened your mouth and I was like, who is that? 
uh, <laughs> you know, it's like they got a ringer in, uh, they got, they have a professional in. And then the next time I met you, you were performing at um, uh, a, a, the Denim and Diamonds Gala for Autism Care Today. And you got up and brought the house down. And it was an entirely different style than what you sang at the karaoke. So what, what, what is this? Is this just another hobby or is this, you know, tell us what you do singing wise. Oh, singing has always been a, a passion of mine. It's not what I want to do as, it's not quite what I want to do as a career. I want to get into voiceover. Uh, but I do, because um, like the music career sounds like really like a lot and I don't really want to get into it, but I do love singing and I do love performing. And I've always, I've always loved performing since I was a little kid. Um, I've always loved singing. I was in the, I was the lead singer of the jazz band at my high school for two years. Um, and I was, um, and I did my college's um, uh, jazz band for uh, one semester. So that was really fun. I definitely- Well, that explains how, why you can, cause you, you were doing scatting at the, the, the Denim and Diamonds thing. And, and, and I was like, what is going on? She's a jazz singer too. You were awesome, madam. Thank you was really, really awesome. But now I got to know about the voiceover thing. So obviously, are you taking and taking part in the voiceover that's happening at the Ed Asner Family Center? Um, so I haven't, I don't think I've been, I don't think I've done any voiceover for the center um, yet. However, I did see, I, I got to go to one of uh, Jesse Keenan's classes. She teaches voiceover at the Ed Asner Family Center. And it was really and I got to participate a little bit, so that was really fun. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but my husband does voiceover. So Absolutely. at some point, the, you, the two of you will have to, and you have an amazing voice, Chelsea, and I'm sure because you're a singer that you can do all different kinds of things with it. Have the Nickelodeon people heard what you can do? Not yet. <laughs> all right, well, we did a shout out to Paul Rudd. Let's do a shout out to Nickelodeon. Cause I bet you would be a great voice for animation or is there other, like, what would you like to do with voiceover? What's your dream? So actually animation is what I want to do uh, mm. with voiceover. I'm, I'm open to all kinds of voiceover, but animation is uh, what I'm really, really into. Cause I've always loved, I love to be able to use both my own voice and different voices that I can do. I don't want to put you on the spot, but are there any other voices you'd like to share with us right now? Oh, in boy. case Nickelodeon is watching? Um, ooh, off the top of my head. I like, do you have a little kid voice or a little, like for animation, or do you have uh, like a scary voice or an animal voice or anything? Uh, Let's see. I, like, I put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. I like you using my, I definitely like doing, um, because I have a lower voice, I definitely like doing villains. A lot. Okay, uh, I can see that. So, um, well, I won't make you do it here because you want to. <laughs> you, you don't want to give it away. Make Nickelodeon come to you and and listen to your your voiceover reel. Uh, but I love it. I think that I can see that for you because uh, you're so talented in so many different ways. So, um, so P we've been so enjoying this conversation, but now I want to move back in time a little bit to talk about how you got here and why the things that are important to you are important to you. Um, so how do you identify yourself, Chelsea? Uh, diagnostically, just out of curiosity. In life. I mean, like, honestly, you don't even have to go there. Like when, when you're talking to people about who you are, how do you identify yourself? And if you don't diagnostically, then. I mean, I mean, depends. Some of, some parts of my identity are important, but they're on a need to know basis. So yeah, yeah. some people like, I don't know if I were to be asked, like, I would tell people that I'm Jewish. I would tell people I'm a woman. Um, depending on how close I am to a person, I would tell them that I'm high functioning autistic. And, uh, and I love that answer. I love, because there are different contexts in which each of these things would be, um, important to share or not as important to share. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that now we're going to get a barrage, even though I had said that you were a self-advocate, 
Um, I'm sure that you get people who say that they meet you and that they have no idea. Is does is that ever troublesome for you when people? Um, not really. I don't like. Uh, I, I don't, it's not something that I get offended by and it's not something I would expect people um, to assume. Like, uh, but if there's like, I don't really get offended if people can or can't tell. <laughs> right. It's just what it is. Chelsea, I love you. We just need more of you in the world. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, but let's, like, and I'm gonna ask questions and I'm gonna try not to be offensive, but if there's ever any something that you don't, or you're like, yeah, that's just not important, Shannon. I don't like, I won't be offended at all. But I know that our viewers are going to want to know these kinds of things. So how old were you when you did get a diagnosis? I want to say I was about two. Okay. So way earlier than you would actually remember. Yeah. And in fact, I, we didn't really talk about my diagnosis until much, much later in my life. It was one of those things where kind of, I had to be ready to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to talk about it like my junior or senior year of high school and that's when it was confirmed to me if that makes any sense like it makes it was total of, sense yeah but but I I know because so many people write in and say I don't know when I should talk to my child about a diagnosis and I don't know how to do it so what do you, when you say that you had to be ready what made you ready and how did you tell your parents that you were ready well I think it was like one of those things where I just brought up the question. And the thing is, is that like, it was before I brought up the question, like it was about working on my skills, working on my, you know, emotional um, stability and stuff like that. Um, I get, I mean, I'm not a parent. I don't know exactly what it's like to be in the position of a parent, but I do know that for my parents, they wanted to make sure that I was able to develop as a person without putting myself into too many boxes. I love that. And look at what a great job they did. Uh, clearly they, they accomplished that. Um, so what made you think I need to have this conversation? Were you having challenges in certain areas or did somebody say something to you that you went to them and said, hey, what's the deal here? Not necessarily. It was part of me just like, like I always knew I like had very individual struggles and stuff like that I, I definitely understood that I like and I knew I had like other diagnoses like OCD and I didn't think like they wanted to do I know my parents they want to do like one diagnosis at a time <laughs> like yeah. and I know that I wouldn't have been able to handle um two diagnoses at a time especially in middle school which is a difficult time for everybody but it was a especially difficult time for me not like Friendship wise, I had a lot of friends, but emotionally it was definitely very um, difficult. I've, I'm glad, I'm lucky I've had a lot of support, but it wasn't anything that like, it was more just something like I was doing research. I had always been like, and I was already working with other special needs individuals. And I think there was like things about myself that I like, so it was like one of those things that added up. And then when it was confirmed, there wasn't really any sort of surprises or anything like that. It wasn't. Wow. Um, and so you mentioned that, you know, there were some th things that you were having challenges. What, what do you think your biggest challenges were back then? Back then, I think a lot of um, just a lot of uh, just a lot of worrying about what people, you know, thought. like basically in middle school, I worried whatever I worried about the same things in a way that most middle schoolers were worried about but it was magnified if that makes any sense if that totally makes sense I think what's so incredible when you think about the full circle of the fact that now you're a social director um helping other people at that age begin to overcome what was challenging for you there's something absolutely beautiful about that Chelsea is that part of why you wanted to do this work? Because you knew how, what you struggled with? Um, in a way. And it's very interesting because I was always a very social person. Um, all, I was always a very social person, but I definitely had more, even though I was very social, I had a lot of anxiety, even while I was being social. Um, that's 
so that's definitely a part of why I like to help other people but also I like to I just like to engage people like in general like I just have a and I've also like it's a combination of things I've worked with um people with various special needs and disabilities even before I was well aware of my diagnosis so it's part of that too there's a lot of it's not just one thing that led led me here it's many 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 things and so you know i look at you and i just think my gosh what an incredible young woman who you know it's just so enjoyable to spend time with you like this um but we all have challenges and so i'm i'm curious and you don't have to share this but are there challenges that you still have that you're trying to overcome are there things that you're working on? Like, you know, I mean, there's things I'm working on. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing right now is like, cause I also have the OCD on top of my spectrum stuff. So yes. a lot of the OCD stuff is what I'm um, working on now and will always be working on. And every, every year it gets better and better. Um, these are things I'll probably be working on my whole life, but it's manageable. It's good. I have, I'm lucky to have a lot of support yeah, that's a wonderful. Uh, you know, we'll we'll have to talk, and then you and you and I, when and when this is all over, we'll have to go and have tea or something because I also have OCD. Have you? Has anybody tried um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy with you? I'm sure you, like somebody, has talked about cognitive behavioral therapy with you or done it, and you may not even know that that's what it was called. Where they systematically desensitize you to some things. Um, no. What I have had though are like I've had a lot of um I've had. Um, I've had uh, therapists, I've had like, like I've had like classroom from like, I've had classroom aides. Like I've never, I've never had anyone in my life who's tried to stifle my creativity. And well, that's good. Yeah. No one should, yeah, uh, cause they has. should let you run. Yeah, everybody who's helped me in my life with all of my diagnoses have helped me. They've helped like actually helped me and they're, all people I consider my family. So. That's wonderful. What do you think, since we're talking about things that helped you, what do you think has helped you the most? That's hard to say. Um, I think a combination of my therapists and my parents. My parents are probably because my parents um, were very committed to making sure I had the right resources that I got, that I had the right um, opportunities to um, academically and creatively succeed. That's just a wonderful thing. Uh, my face hurts. I'm smiling so hard. Uh, so, okay, let's talk about long-term goals. Uh, you know, obviously you want to be a voiceover artist. What else, what else do you see for yourself in the future, Chelsea? Sky the limit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would hope that the universe is the limit. I hope that like there's anything's possible um i'm open to a lot of possibilities i don't know like i i'm a very short term oriented person too like <laughs> like i know i want to do voiceover and i know that like maybe i want to get married i know i know that much like and do I you know think I, you want to have kids do you want to be a mom um that's a good question i want to i don't want to give birth that i know for sure i know i don't want to give birth if I want to maybe like adopt and maybe like an older kid. Cause I don't know if I'll ever be able to handle a toddler. <laughs> I, I listen, I think it's great that you know yourself. And I have a very dear friend who was very clear and said, I am not giving birth. That is not happening. And she has adopted two children and loves being a mom, but she was very clear from the beginning. There will be, there will be no babies in this body. Um, and I, you know, I love the fact that she was true to herself. Okay, so uh, what, if there was one thing that you wanted the world to know about you, what would you say? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that I love people. I love talking to people. I love getting to know people. Um, I'm happy to be your friend and a supporter. What a wonderful thing. I just want to cry because you know that there is uh, a world out there that still thinks that individuals uh, on the spectrum don't have em empathy, don't care, 
Um, they put a label and go, these, these folks have deficits in social skills, so they must not care about people. Not, I, nothing could be further from the truth. Oh. And, I, and I don't know how anybody could spend this amount of time with you and, and still have that thought hold water. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's uh, definitely a common uh, misconception. And, uh, and hopefully, like, the, we, a lot of us, I hope believe that most of us on the spectrum, I think we're breaking those, those misconceptions every day. And I'm glad they're being broken more and more and more every year and every moment. Um, yeah, if, if we can open people's minds, it's a great thing. Yeah, well, you're doing that every day that you're doing things. And again, we want to say that um, if people want to spend more time with you, they have a ready opportunity every Saturday night at 7 p.m. The Ed Asner Family Center is hosting on Zoom a uh, movie chat with Chelsea and friends. And it's meant ideally for folks on the spectrum that are teen uh, and adults, correct? That is correct. Um, but, um, you know, is a parent allowed to hang out with their teen or adult, or is it better to put them in the Zoom and let them be? I'll, if, if a parent wants to join and they feel like it's most comfortable for, the, for them to be there with their, uh, their teen or young adult, that's wonderful. We can need as many people as we can get, adults, parents, uh, children, friends, and like, or even like or friends of friends. We need as many people as we can get. Okay. And every week it's a different movie or this week it's two movies because you're going to compare and contrast the old parent trap and the newer parent trap. Um, and then um, if you want to attend this, all you have to do is RSVP to at, uh, no, excuse me, Shelby, S-H-E-L-B-Y at edasnerfamilycenter.org and she can get you hooked up so that you have the codes to be able, cause you're going to have to have codes. You can't just, you know, it's not like a, you have to have the address to a party, right? Well, this is the code, the address to the party. Um, and so you can get that for yourself or get that for your teen. What a wonderful thing. Um, and, and anybody around the world, if you've got an internet connection and I know you do, if you're watching this, then you can attend and go to that. But if you want to be following Chelsea, Chelsea, where are the places that we can follow your adventures? Tell us, Tell us everything. There's my Facebook, um, which is just Chelsea Darnell. And then there's my Instagram, which I think is Chelsea Darnell 22. Okay. Um, and, and I, you know, I am uh, Instagram illiterate. I'm just going to admit that I'm that old that I, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. But I, the people who do know how to do Instagram should be able to find you with that, with that name, right? Chelsea yeah. Darnell 22. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I just want to thank you for being an amazing role model. Thank you. And, um, and for just being an incredible person. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm so glad that we finally had, we've been saying we were going to do this forever, but I'm glad that we finally had the opportunity. And I can't wait until you're doing events again in person back at the center, because that Valentine's Day dance was the most fun I've had in a very long time. It was like a really good wedding, but we didn't have to bring a gift. <laughs> That's what it was. It was it was dancing and they like I love I love being around kids and young people and I love being around my kid. And um, to be able to go to a party with your kid and have them go off and interact and dance with people and hang with their friends, but then come and dance with you. That's what a wedding feels like to me because you're all there together as a family, right? Um, but this was that, but we didn't have to bring a gift for the bride and groom. So it was super fabulous, awesome. Um, it was just a really wonderful thing. And I wanna say too, that at one point, my son came up and asked you to dance and you were like so fabulous and, you know, because uh, we're trying to get him used to doing those kinds of things. And so thank you for allowing him to cut his teeth on, on asking women to dance with you. So. Of course, your son's amazing. I mean, we were, we were like counselors, volunteers at Camp Ed together. Like we've had a lot of fun. He's like super cool and chill. He's, he's really funny. He's great. He's great. Well he feels the same way about you. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing for, for me as a mom that, you know, you're a circle that he's, 
he's moving in because that's good. That's good people, right? And all moms want that. So if you want that for your kiddos or you're watching and you're like, hey, I want to be a part of that. You need to Shelby uh, at Ed Asner. I see I've, I've lost it again. Where is it? Where, Shelby at the, you know, the at sign at Ed Asner um, Family Center org. And check that out. Chelsea, thank you so much. We're out of time. I don't know where the time went. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, and stay safe and stay healthy and keep cooking uh, and keep chatting about the movies. And we can't let us know when you make all those red carpet videos um, live so that we can tell people to go watch them. Absolutely. For sure. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for being with us, Chelsea. Thank you. Oh. I want to remind everybody, we're going to be back tomorrow and our guest tomorrow, Anita Lesko, is going to be talking about her new book, The Food Revolution. And we have autism self-advocate Ryan Lee is going to be with us as well. That'll be tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug for me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Happy April. Bye-bye.